Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to learn how to knit these socks. and They are lace socks called house socks. So they're more like slipper socks for winter or even for summer because some of us have chilly evenings. And uh, I've done a lace pattern on the top and stockinette sole. They are toe up magic loop two at a time and I show you how to do all that in this video. If you would like to get a copy of the pattern, uh, have a look in the description down below and I'll have a link that will take you to my Ravelry page where you can download this pattern. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the things that we're using for this uh, house socks, um, we're gonna need our wool and I have here Wool of the Andes in sports weight by Knit Picks. And I have two colors because we're gonna make the toes and the heels uh, white or, you know, one color and then the body of the sock a different color. I also have a crochet hook and I have my needles and I'm using Knit Pro Platinas in um, 3.5 millimeters with a longish cord because uh, we're going to knit these two at a time. However, we're going to start each toe separately and then we're going to join everything together. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the provisional cast on. For the provisional cast on, we're going to use a different color yarn. So this is the yarn that I'm going to use for the toe and this is the scrap yarn that I'm going to use for the um, provisional cast on. And um, we just need a bit of this yarn. So I'm going to make a slip knot. And I've done this before in a, another video, um, but this is on a lighter color so I hope that you can see better. So what I did here was a slip knot and then I'm going to chain about 25-26 so chain quite loosely because we are going to pick up our um, stitches on the back of this chain. Now I don't remember how many <laughs> I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Let's do twenty-six. Cut your yarn and pull through. And now we're going to pick up stitches on the back of this um, chain. So these are the V's of your chain and then you want to flip it to the back and lay it flat like this. This is where we started. We're going to tie a knot so you know that's where you started your chain. So you want to flip your chain upside down like this with um, the knot on your right and then you want to take your wool, find the end if you can. Where is the end of this thing? Yep, found it. And you want to take your needles, one of them actually, and go on the back of the chain. Can you see? It's not focusing. Maybe if I put it lower. There we go. Go on the back of the chain through one of those um, loops like this and then pull your yarn through one and do that 20 times so we pick up 20 stitches one two 
three, four, five, six, oh. seven. Just doesn't want to focus. There we go. Eight, nine, Twenty. So now we have 20 stitches picked up. Let me just move that out of the way because I think that's why it's not focusing. By the way, that's the other toe. Um, because even though I'm going to work these two at a time, I like to do the, the, the toes one at a time because it's so much easier to work with only one instead of getting all, the, all your yarns tangled up. So move that out of the way. Here we go. So now we have 20 stitches like this. And if you turn, you will see the chain V's all nicely lined up, which means that you picked up the stitches right on the back of the, of the chain. Remember, you started at the knot um, end here, and our working yarn is here. So we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna start the wraps. And the, the pattern tells you how many wraps to, um, to do on, on each side. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna show you a, a couple of times and then I'm, I'm gonna show you how to pick up the wraps. So we wanna start with um, a purl row because we're knitting in the flat. So I'm gonna purl to the last stitch So I've got the last stitch here. So all I'm going to do is keep the yarn in the back and pick up that stitch and turn my work. So we didn't work that last stitch. As you can see, we just put a wrap on it and I'm going to slide that stitch with the yarn in the back and I'm going to knit to the last stitch. Okay. Here we are at the last stitch. I'm going to bring my yarn forward like this and I'm going to slip that stitch over. Then I'm going to turn my work with my yarn in the front this time like this. I'm going to slip that first stitch and purl to second to last and wrap that one as well. Then I'm going to show you one more time how to wrap a stitch on the right side and then I'll let you follow the pattern. Here we are. Two stitches left. One is already wrapped. We're going to wrap this one here. So yarn in the back. I'm going to 
slip that stitch over like this, bring the yarn in the front, slip the other stitch like that. Turn my work and we have the yarn coming through the back like that and I'm going to just slip both stitches like so and I'm going to knit um, to one stitch before the wrapped stitch oh. that would be second to last here we go this stitch here is wrapped now we're going to wrap this one so I'm going to bring my yarn forward I'm going to slip that stitch leave my yarn in the back slip this stitch as well and turn my work and now as you can see we wrap this stitch and this stitch and I'm just going to put my yarn put my needle through like this and pick up and then purl to third from the end where I'm going to wrap again and keep on wrapping um, as many stitches as the pattern tells you and I will see you when we're ready to pick up those wraps. So I finished wrapping all my stitches and we're ready to pick up the wraps so um, I'm going to purl to the first wrap stitch And you, you'll see um, which one is wrapped because it's kind of like st sticking out or something. It's like a bit of, of a skinny stitch like this. So I'm going to turn my work. Ooh. I'm going to turn my work like this. Hang on. And you see the wrap. This here. That one is the wrap around my stitch if you lift it you'll see that that is just a loop loop a loop a loop around my stitch and on the wrong side you always want to flip it like this pick that loop and put it on your needle like so and then you pull two the two together now because our work is going to turn we have to wrap again the next stitch so yarn in the back pick up that stitch bring yarn in in the front and turn our work so we wrapped we, we did a second wrap on on the stitch after we picked up a wrap you can see this is one wrap the first wrap that we did and this will be the second wrap so I'm just gonna pick s slip that stitch over like that and I'm going to knit to the first um, wrapped stitch that I can see and like I said you'll be able to see it because it's skinny like this and I'm going to pick up the wrap, the, the wrap from the front and you can see the wrap is just this one here can you see it? that's the wrap and I'm going to put it on my needle and I'm going to knit those those two together but then I have to add another wrap on this stitch so yarn in the front slip that stitch over yarn in the back and turn my work and you have the option to turn your work right away or slide these ones onto the needle if you're doing two at the same time you might have to slide these over but just um, you know do whatever feels more comfortable for you so with yarn in the front I'm going to slip that stitch so we added the second wrap on that stitch now I'm going to purl to my double wrap stitch and we're going to have to pick either one wrap or two wraps um, I usually pick both wraps because I like to um, have not many holes on my uh, toe and I'll show you what I mean so this is the double uh, wrapped stitch I'm going to turn my work and can you see there are two wraps 
one, two wraps there. So I'm just going to go through both of them, or you can do what, one at a time, depending on how, how tight of a knitter you are. But I'm, I'm quite loose, so I'm going to pick both of them up and put them on my needle and pull. It looks like a three together, like that. And then do another wrap on this stitch. So yarn in the back, slide that stitch over and turn your work. I'll show you on the right side. So slip that um, double wrapped stitch, knit to the <laughs> double wrapped stitch <laughs> on the right side. Here we are. Can you see the double wraps? One, two, two wraps. So I'm going to slide my needle under both of those wraps, put it on my left needle and knit three together, or it looks like three together. Add another wrap on this stitch, yarn in the front, slip it, turn my work. And uh, pick up that stitch like that. So you can see it's double wrapped. Pull again to the wrapped stitch and I'll show you how to pick up that wrap again. Here we go. Turn your work and you see the both wraps here. Put your needle under and then pull them and place them on your needle and pearl three together. Add another wrap to this stitch here. Turn your work. Slip the wrap, wrap stitch, knit to the double wrapped stitch. And you keep going like this until you picked up all your wraps. What have I done there? Here we are, the two wraps. One, two. Slide my needle under them. Place them on my left needle. Knit three together. Wrap the next stitch. Turn my work and continue doing that until you finish wrapping uh, uh, picking up all your wraps and you'll end up with your toe like this but I will see you when we wrap the last stitch and I'll show you where you need to end up. So I'm ready to pick up the last wrap which is on this on the right side on this needle here or on this end here so I'm just gonna knit to that last stitch that is wrapped twice Here you are, and we're going to pick up both wraps. And sometimes I have to do it one at a time, uh, especially at the end. But just pick up both wraps and knit that together. And this is where we're at. So what we need to do is turn our work here, and. Um, we have the non-slip end on our right with the provisional cast on side on facing us, the working yarn in the back. And now we need to pick up the, the stitches and remove the provisional cast on. And I'll show you how we could do that in the next segment. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pull our needle out like this. And then um, we need to undo this chain. So just 
pull the yarn through like this and the chain should unravel as you can see and the first the first stitch that we need to pick up it's a bit of a it's a bit of pain because the yarn goes through it I don't know if you can see but we have to put our needle through that's why it's good to have a different color provisional cast on and maybe I should have gone even like dark so you can see better but that's our first stitch can you see just put your needle through and then we need to pull our yarn out from the provisional cast on can you see the yarn is coming out that's our first stitch just be slowly pulling it like that so we have one stitch and then we want to go on the right uh, leg of each V so we have these stitches the V's like that and we want to go on the right leg of each V so that will be one that will be two oh. you want to move your provisional cast on um, out a bit because the f especially the first stitches are quite tight can you see that's another leg that's another leg and as you keep going you'll see them easier another one another one And you need to pick up 20 stitches. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Can you see? 9, 10. So we're halfway. And now we can do the fun part, which is to pull out. And sometimes it's hard to come, th to come out of the... Because... You know, the, the provisional cast on just sticks <laughs> to our work. But um, you can always, always cut the provisional cast on yarn. So as you can see here, I've got two stitches tied together with it. Well, there we go. It's coming out like that. Okay, so we have 10 stitches and we got to pick up 10 more. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can't really see that last one. It should be that one. 10. So pull it. There we go. Cast on, provisional cast on removed. Tighten that a little bit. And now because our working yarn is here in the back, we need to slide the stitches to this needle so just slide them over like this and what i did last uh, for the first one i've slid both stitches or how, how would you say that i don't know i put both needles on dpn's See, that one is twisted. Can you see? So, got to put it on. Ooh. Okay. So now we're ready to work magic loop. Because the yarn is in the back. As you can see. And we have this. And we have this. So, like I said, when I finished... 
when I finished uh, my first toe, like I finished this one, I put I put them on double pointed needles so it's easy to slide them on. So now all I need to do is slide slide them on like this. And then I have two toes waiting for me to uh, start the rest of the sock. So now we're really ready to start the magic loop method for these two socks. And um, before I change to um, my main color, I want to do one round of just knitting with, with my toe color in order to close the gaps because we have gaps here. Um, so I'll show you how I usually do that. So just uh, start knitting the magic loop. I pick up from the middle because we have a gap here. So I just pick up a loop or something, put it on here and then knit those two together. So I don't increase, I just close the gap and then knit to the end of my first sock. And I do the same to the second sock and on the other side. And then um, I just switch to my main color and I start knitting either plain stockinette or my pattern like I suggest for these socks. They are called house socks after all. So we're gonna do a nice um, lace on the top of the foot and it's all written in the um, in the pattern row by row how you're going to work that so just follow along with it and then the next thing that we're going to do is the heel which is going to be in this white again and uh, believe it or not the heel is knitted exactly the same as the toe uh, it it kind of tricks you uh, because <laughs> you can't really see it because it looks different obviously the toe is looks different than the heel but it's worked exactly the same exactly the same and I'll show you when we get there um, these ends you just want to pull them and stick them inside your toes so they don't bother you Okay, you want to take your um, main color yarn and attach it. So all we need to do is hold your yarn like this and start knitting with it. And we do the same to the second sock. Obviously you have to use a second ball of yarn. But that's always the deal with two up two toe up socks at a, at a time or two socks at a time. You need to use two balls of yarn. This is what it looks like. You can't see the way you change color like you see on the wrong side, but that's gonna be on the inside anyway. And then you just wanna follow along the pattern and uh, I will see you when we're ready for um, our heel. So once you finish the foot of your sock, and mine looks like this, and this is the lace that I've done. Um, they're called the house socks, so they have uh, little houses on them. You can see, they're cute. They look like houses from this side, and they also look like houses from this side. More like this. Anyway, we're finished with the foot, so you chose your size and you knitted as many repeats as you need of the pattern of the lace pattern for your foot and now we're ready for the toes for the heels and the heels are worked exactly the same as I said um, we're gonna attach the light color yarn and uh, I'll just show you a little bit of how to work the heel again um, the wraps and turns 
uh, the, there is a little bit of a difference between the toes and the heel, but that's only in stitch count. It has nothing to do with the technique. The technique is the same. So you want to attach your yarn like so and start knitting. And we're going to knit in the flat now. We're going to leave these stitches hanging on the back on the cord. So we're just knitting in the flat. So knit to our last stitch. And yeah, I painted my nails. <laughs> okay. So when you get to your last stitch, we're going to yarn forward, slip that stitch, yarn back, and we just wrapped it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're not going to work with the gray yarn. We are going to attach our white yarn to our second sock. Just leave a tail about this long so we can do the weave in the end. So we just start knitting to our last stitch. Yarn forward, slip that stitch, yarn back and we turn our work and now you will have quite a lot of yarns hanging around but just you know they will get tangled up so you just need to spend a little, time, a little bit of time to untangle. With the yarn in the front we're going to slip the first stitch like this and then we're going to purl to our last stitch. Yes, I do purl differently because I'm a continental knitter. I say this every time I, I uh, purl something on camera because I've had questions. Oh, you knit through the back loop. Oh, you purl this way. I do, but my work looks exactly the same as um, anyone else's work. So it's no problem. Now I, I'm at the last stitch. I'm going to keep the yarn in the back, slip that stitch, bring the yarn in the front and leave it hanging there until we get on the right side. Move to the second sock with the yarn in the front and this stitch is wrapped around it. We pick it like this, purl to the last stitch. The other thing that I want to say is that I've had some really not nice comments lately and English is not my first language. I try as much as I can not to say um or so or you know anything like that. But it's hard because I have to think on how to say the next thing in English. So I do apologize because I know it might be annoying. Just bear with me and hopefully you know I'll just be better at it. So purl to the last stitch, yarn in the back, slip that stitch, bring yarn in the front and we turn our work. So now we wrapped on the right side and on the wrong side and we're ready to do a second wrap. So this stitch is wrapped as you can see. This yarn just comes around it like that. So we're just going to slip it and knit to our second to last stitch but I do want to thank you to everyone that leaves me such nice comments thank you very much it really brightens my day after I get one of those bad comments thank you and I'm glad to help okay second to last stitch 
we're going to bring our yarn forward slip that stitch yarn back and we're going to slip this stitch over on this um, needle put our yarn in the back and go to our second sock just make sure you take your white yarn and not your tail <laughs> so as we saw on the second sock this stitch is wrapped we're going to pick it with the yarn in the back and we're going to knit to our second to last I think that's how you say it second from last so we're at the <laughs> second to last stitch I'm sorry I don't know what you call it I'm gonna yarn forward slip that stitch yarn back slip the next stitch and turn and if you were just working one uh, one toe or one heel you wouldn't have to pick that extra stitch on the needle you would just turn your work but because uh, we need it here we can't just turn our work I just find it's easier so just pick it and things will get will be easier for you I'm going to show you one more time how to wrap on the wrong side so now we have this stitch which was wrapped first so I pick it this was wrapped second so I pick that stitch as well and then purl to second to last stitch One more okay so yarn in the back slip that stitch bring yarn forward and slip the last stitch okay now we're going to pick the two slip stitches with the yarn in between in the front like this then I'm going to purl till one stitch before our wrapped stitch or something like that second to last okay here we are yarn in the back slip that stitch bring yarn forward and slip the last stitch and pull on the tail so it tightens so you want to continue doing your wraps and turns for as many you want to wrap as many stitches as the pattern tells you and then we're going to be ready to pick up those wraps and finish the heel and uh, continue with the cuff I've finished the wraps so we're ready to pick up those wraps and add the second wraps like we did on the toes so what we want to do is slip all the wrap stitches so as many as the pattern tells you then we're going to knit to our first wrap stitch or the last that we did so the first that we meet will be I'll show you what it looks like will be like this so the wrap is right here can you see it it's just like a funny looking stitch so we pick up that wrap put it on our needle and knit those two together and then we're going to do a second wrap on the next stitch so yarn in the front slip that stitch yarn in the back slip the rest of the stitches do the same to our second sock and my yarns are so tangled up now I really need to untangle them so slip those stitches as many as you wrapped then we're going to knit to our first wrapped stitch here it is you see it's looking like tall and skinny so we pick up that wrap put it on our needle and knit those two together yarn forward 
yarn forward and wrap that stitch as well. Yarn back, slip those stitches on the needle, turn our work. And we're going to pick wrap on the right on the wrong side and I'll show you how to do that. So slip the stitches that are wrapped purl to our first wrapped stitch. And that's going to be a tall and skinny one like this. Then you're going to flip your work. Oh, flip your work like this, and you will see the wrap. My wrap is just here. You see it? You will see it's just like a loop around the stitch. So we're going to pick it from the right side, slip it on our needle, and pull those two together and add another wrap to this stitch. So yarn in the back, slip, yarn forward, slip the rest of the stitches. The same to our second sock. We're going to slip the wrap stitches, purl to our first wrap stitch. tall and skinny one. Flip our work, pick the wrap, which is this one, can you see? Put it on our needle and pull those two together. Yarn in the back, slip this, the stitch, yarn in the front. So we just added a second wrap to that stitch. And now we're going to have to pick two wraps and you could pick two wraps or one wrap. The only difference is if you pick only one wrap, it's going to leave a little bit of a hole. Uh, if you pick both, like we did in, in the toe, it's just going to be smooth like this. Maybe, um, well, it's your choice. I usually pick up both wraps because I think it looks better. So we're going to slip the wrap stitches, knit to our double wrapped stitch, which is this one, and you can see the double wraps, that's one, two. So we're going to pick the first wrap, put it on our needle, you can just stop there or pick the second wrap, put it on our needle, and then we're just going to knit those three together like this and add a second wrap to the next stitch. So yarn forward, slip, yarn back. And we're going to do the same to the next, to the second sock. Oh, my yarns are so tangled up. <laughs> So slip the wrap stitches, knit to our double wrapped stitch. Here we are, two wraps, can you see them? We're going to pick up the first wrap, put it on our needle. Pick up the second wrap, put it on our needle, and knit the three together. And add a second wrap to the next stitch. Yarn forward, slip, yarn back, slip those stitches. And we're going to do the same on the wrong side. And you're going to continue uh, picking up the, the wraps and adding wraps to the next stitch until you finish. And I'll meet you there when we're going to join with the front. And so I finished picking up the wraps and I kind of finished the whole heel. And this is what it looks like. And now we're ready to go back to Magic Loop and do the gusset all in lace. Um, what I've done was cut the yarn and uh, did a knot 
a double knot here just to keep it secure until I weave in the ends. And I'm going to pick the grey colour and start knitting in Magic Loop method following the pattern of the lace. And um, you will have specific uh, instructions on which size you're knitting, where you're at in the lace, because for the small size, you finish the lace somewhere halfway of the third house, for medium at the top of the house, and for large, medium of the fourth house. But I will have all the information in the pattern of whichever size you're deciding to knit but for for my size the next the, the first row of the gusset is just knit stitches so I'm just going to start knitting on on the back of the heel with the gray color and then I'm just going to start working the pattern and you have the choice to do a long gusset or a, like a short sock or a long sock. I uh, I want to knit a short kind of kind of a short sock for this one because it's more like a house slipper sock. So I don't want it to be long. Obviously, it's your choice. You can repeat the lace a few more times to make the cuff. Why do I keep calling gusset? It's not gusset, it's the cuff. <laughs> Sorry. To make the cuff longer. But this is like a short cuff sock that I'm knitting. So um, if you have a gap, you can just pick a stitch like we did. Put it on and just knit the two together through the back or through the front just to close that gap and yeah I will meet you when we're ready to finish the cuff of the sock and bind off and we are going to do a stretchy bind off so here we are at the last part of um, our sock and that is just the edge at the top and the bind off and I've done the lace section then I've done a two by two rib uh, all written in the pattern and now all we need to do is attach the white color yarn so I've already cut the gray one just tuck it in and attach the white color just for a couple of rows and then we're going to do a stretchy bind off so we attach it the same way, just hold your yarn like this and just start knitting. Now um, do pay attention in the pattern where I tell you that after you finish the 2x2 two two rib, you work one row of plain knitting just so we don't get pearl bumps when we change color. So the color change, it's smooth. Okay, so we've attached the contrasting color yarn, or in my case, the white. And as you can see, it's a smooth change. It's, you, you can't see the pearl bumps because we did one row of plain knitting. Attach it to the second sock. So now that you work the rows that the pattern tells you to in the contrasting color yarn, we're ready to do the bind off and we're done with our socks. So um, this is how I usually do a stretchier bind off for the uh, top of my socks. So I start with knit one, knit the second one, then I pass the knitted slit stitch over, then I knit another one and this time I move both stitches on the left needle and knit them together like this. Then the next one, I just bind it off as usual. 
but the next one I knit, put my left needle through both and knit two together. Then the next one I knit and I pass that stitch over. Next one I knit, put my left needle through both and knit those two together. And that is how I do my stretch here bind off. And uh, I, I find that it works fine, uh, especially because I like this to be a bit looser, so it curls up nicely for my sock. But yeah, this is um, the house, these are the house socks. I hope you really like this pattern. Let me know what you think. Um, this is my first sock pattern that I release. I have a baby skirt pattern that I done last year. And then I also have a children's cardigan, summer cardigan that I'm working on. So that will, that should come out soon as well. I just had some technical problems, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, um, I'm done with this first part and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's stretchy enough. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.